Hello and thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Now on the show we've been talking about all sorts of bits and bobs and one of the things that uh, uh, of course is worrying people at the time is money. Money, paying for everything. Everything left, right and centre comes often back to these things. Bit of fiat currency or uh, promissory notes as we've heard them referred to in recent times. And I thought it would be interesting to find out what promissory notes really are uh, because it does have words on that and um, people have been questioning this. Where does it, what's it backed by these days? So I've got on the show as my special guest today a monetary historian, Dave Silver, and he joins me now. Hello, Dave. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, You're very welcome to come on because I'm very interested to find out as much as I can about promissory notes and what we can do with them if... Uh, if we run out of these ones that are manufactured for us. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of information about that. Could I start going back, talking about monetary history? Of course, it'd be very interesting. <laughs> I'd like to start way back before money. Right. Time before money. Yes, there was, wasn't there? Yes. And before that. So what was used if you were a farmer or a fisherman or you're producing something of value? It was barter, wasn't it? Before money, it was barter. Yes. The problem with barter is you need something called the coincidence of wants. Both parties have got to desire what the other one is offering. And sometimes it works and it's great. And both parties feel they have good value. But if, for example, a meat farmer wanted to trade with someone who was a vegetarian, well, it wouldn't work, would it? Right. It had to be a universally recognized medium of exchange. And lots of things have been used, as I'm sure you know, there's been salt, tobacco, seashells tally sticks, all these things, clay tablets, but nothing has been better than gold and silver. Gold right. is always the first and last resort. It always reverts back to gold and silver because the least amount of people will not accept gold and silver. In fact, nobody really will they? If you're producing something of value, you're not going to say, I won't accept gold and silver. I'd prefer salt or seashells. No. Gold it always reverts back to. So that was the first forms of money. But really, can you give me a second? Thank you. Sorry, my little girl. So, where, where was I? Um, gold and silver. Yep. And, yeah, and that everything comes back to there. But you were going on to say we can't use um, other coins and things and like that. So, the rise of the first bankers. Now, they weren't called bankers back then. I'm going to refer to them as cunning men. The first cunning men, they said gold and silver is cumbersome. It's, you know, it's weighty. Having these little purses with gold and silver, you have to weigh them. We're going to introduce promissory notes. And the first promissory notes, we're talking about four and a half thousand years ago now that we can document and we can prove. But I think long time before that, before recorded history. They were leather. Little bits of animal skin with the first forms of ink painted on them. And it said something very similar to this that we talked about it, in the first. It, it said, I promise to pay the bearer on demand this much weight of gold and silver. And they were more convenient, weren't they? If you're traveling a long way through the desert, a trader or paper is lighter and easier. Yes. And this brings me to the three stages of the monetary cycle. There's three stages, and this is repeated all through history. Stage one, promissory notes convertible for gold and silver. And they need to be to get people's confidence in them. Yes. It they're happy to use these promissory notes, leather or papyrus, the first ones of paper, or then paper. Well, now it's, it's not paper, it's plastic, isn't it? It's plastic. Yeah. So to start with, you need convertible for gold and silver. And that goes for a while. And then stage two, suspend convertibility for gold and silver. Now you cannot convert them for gold and silver. And stage three, then gold and silver always revalue up to account for all the promissory notes that have been added to supply since the last revaluation. And then you go back to stage one again. And this is always repeated all through history. The three stages. Right. So when you say suspended, you mean um, at the stage two is that so it's suddenly it's no longer back. It's no longer back by it, but we've got so used to using them. Excellent. That's it. We don't even think that actually we're just transacting, transacting with bits of polymer in this case that's exactly the point people get used to it yeah the last time the 
Before the wars, there was the gold exchange standard, the cycle repeated, and it always ends badly. Stage two. I mean, the Second World War was absolute chaos, wasn't it? It always ends badly. After the Second World War, 1945, went back to stage one again. The Bretton Woods, and this time, Richard, it was the first time that the whole world went back to stage one. So every currency in the world is now backed, it is, is now convertible for monetary precious metal through the US dollar. So that was stage one from 1945 up until the late 60s. Now in stage one, you shouldn't produce more promissory notes than you have gold and silver. Right, because it's it, got to be backed by it. Yeah, but they always do. If you didn't do that, then you could stay on stage one and be honest, sound money. And there's nothing wrong with promissory notes. Hmm. That's convertible. But they always do. And in the late 60s, people started to feel something wasn't right. 68, 69, 1970, 1971, August 15th, 1971, they officially went to stage two. So President Nixon, he was given a speech by his handlers to read out. And he, he officially said, he said, I've, I've instructed Secretary Connolly to suspend the convertibility of promissory notes, the dollar, for monetary precious metal, gold and silver. And he officially went on to stage two. So, h- hang on a minute. He announces this and nobody goes, what the hell do you think you're doing? I think a lot of people did that. A lot of people did that. But most people, like you said, they just got so used to using promissory notes. Yeah, they didn't oh, think twice. They didn't notice. They just carry on using the promissory notes. So, I, we're still in stage two. Hmm. In, what, 50-something years now? But I feel we're very close to stage three. I think the latter half, half of the 2020s like I think, or maybe 20, 30, give or take a few years, we'll be in stage three. So you don't think then that the that this concept now of uh, digital money, things like the uh, cryptocurrencies and, and what the government are telling us they want to bring in, the CBDCs, will, I mean, is that a promissory, ty- a digital promissory note? No. Paper digital, paper digital promissory notes. So my opinion is we'll go into stage three now in a few years, Gold and silver will revalue up. Faith will be lost in these promissory notes. And then we'll go into stage one. There'll be chaos again. It always ends badly. Stage one next time will probably be CBDCs, digital promissory notes. And they'd have to have them convertible for gold and silver to have people's faith in them. And then they'd be better than all the competition that are not convertible for gold and silver. Right. And so, so, so they, but, but will those convertible cbdc's be um programmable yeah it could well be yeah <laughs> it could well be who knows next time right i mean Which, i mean and, and that's and that's obviously down to the the nefarious people they want to be able to control it i think there's theories that there'll be a few attempts to rejigger the system and people won't buy it people mm. on silver if the promissory notes paper digital if there's no faith in them they'll just use silver as money right but the good news is, so what I keep saying is promissory notes are cash and cash are promissory notes. And I really want people to always remember that for hmm. cash. So you can use promissory notes. I mean, we're in the part of the cycle now where you can write your own promissory notes. And that is cash. And the UK legislation, that is cash. So this is so this is the bit that I wanted to sort of understand, because we hear this a lot. Well, say hear it a lot. I mean, within the truth and sovereignty movement, you hear that the term promissory notes. So just write your own. Let me allow me to just um, somebody what somebody said to me. Just um, I can't remember what, how to phrase it uh, to give you an anecdote of, of a situation. And um, for, for whatever reason, somebody was um, in debt and there was a debt collector at the door. The debt collector comes to the door and says, you need to pay £2,000. And the guy says, yep, yeah, OK, no problem. Gets a piece of paper and a pen and, and ev- effectively writes an IOU or I promise to pay the bearer of. And he does this. doesn't write promissory note on it or anything, but just writes out. But he makes it out for £1,995. He takes a five pound note, staples that to it, hands it to the guy, and the guy goes, I can't accept this, and returns it. And in legal terms, because he has returned, he's refused the money, it actually gets rid of the debt because they said, well, we refuse your money, even though the majority of the money was written on the bit of paper. So is, is is what you're describing 
basically you can literally write it on a bit of paper and that and sign it and that makes it into the money in situations not money but um cash cash is right cash yes for currency promissory look gold and silver are money yeah yeah promissory notes are currency lots of things have been used as currency so you're absolutely right in certain situations you can do that so let's take that scenario good mm. at the door and they you don't agree with it but they say let's just say ten thousand ten thousand pounds so mm. they, you owe us ten thousand pounds we're going to come in and we're going to turn your gas electricity off we're going to take goods we're going to take your van your vehicle as you're familiar with richard so i suggest the first thing you say you don't open the door you don't talk to them you you converse either through ring doorbell or through the window and you say the law requires you identify yourself first and last name Photo ID front and back. You must get this on film. You, see, you must film it. You can take screenshots later. Very important. And your employer's number. And you, you've got to get all these details and you've got to get their face to make sure. And you tell them that it's a very serious offence to not provide the details or provide false information. So you get their face, their ID, and then you say, what is the amount that you say I owe? And they say 10,000. So mm. as you, you would write this, um, how can I get it in focus? Here we go. You would write in words nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five pounds. And it's very important to have the, the five pound note laminated onto it. The idea being they can't accept one without the other. Can't accept one promissory note without the other promissory note. Mm. So it's ten thousands total in promissory notes. And then you, you put that and I've got a covering letter, which I'll talk about later. And you put them together in an envelope and you send it to them and you say, This is for you. This is for you. And they if they've taken it, that's it. Your job's done. Two options. They might refuse it. They're not allowed to refuse on payment preference. But if they hand it back to you, that's fine. Payment offered, payment refused, payment made. But they will generally take it. Once they've anything other than refusing it to you, they've accepted it. They could burn it, throw it away, or destroy it. It doesn't matter. They've, they've accepted it. So now you have paid them in cash, £10,000 in cash, in two promissory notes the five pound promissory note and your own handwritten one. Now they will always, in my experience, they will say, yeah, you've paid five pound. They will accept it five pounds cash, but they will not accept the other one. And if you've got a negative mark on your credit file, your first job is then go to Experian and you have all the details. You need this person, they named Joe Bloggs, Monday, 5.45 PM, exact, all the exact details. I paid him in cash, 10,000 pounds in cash. And they still won't accept it. They, if they well, if they don't, they they still leave a negative mark in your credit file. They don't get you paid in. You then need to go to a report fraud UK website, and it's very detailed. There's a lot of detail you can put on there. You want to put his name, the time, the date, and screenshots of his ID, screenshots of his face. I paid him in cash on this time, and then it all comes down to: Did you? Are promissory notes cash? Is cash promissory notes? If it goes to court. If it does, this is the question, are promissory notes cash? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Under UK legislation, promissory notes are cash. If they weren't, then we couldn't be using these, could we, Richard? Because this is, this is promissory notes. Right. So, so in theory, if you've got, say, your council tax bill and you think, right, OK, I, I, I don't want the argument. I don't want to keep pushing back with all, all the various. I don't want the bailiff, don't want the whole process. What I'll do is I'll just write them out effectively a promissory note send it to them they there you go thanks very much and of, and and i suppose have a witness or take some video of the fact and that you've done how many um a bank of england promissory note to it as well do the same thing yeah because they can't accept one without the other right but in certain situations i would say we've oversimplified it there there's a lot more to it and I'd say it's very important to bear in mind there's no loss, harm or injury. You can't use it in every situation. Make sure you've got clean hands approach. You stay in on it. Don't do anything that is morally wrong. But if you are sure there's no loss, harm or injury, nobody loses anything, yes, you can use promissory notes. So you've got a £5 note there, have you, Richard? I have. So can you read that sentence on the back of it? I've got a 10 here as well. On the back? Yeah. You see the little, the little sentence, very small, I promise to pay the bearer. Um, it's up in the top middle. Oh, that's on the front. Oh, on the front, sorry. Front back. Yeah, sorry. I was looking at um, yeah. Churchill's thing 
where he says, I've got nothing to offer but blood. Uh, so here we go. It says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of five pounds. So that is a promise on a note. Yes. Now, you want to buy some, no, I want to buy something off, no, you want to buy something off me for five pounds, okay? I give okay. you goods, you give me that five pound note. Now I say, okay, thank you. You've given me this promise on a note. And it says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand. So Richard, I am the bearer on demand. Can you please give me what this note promises? What do you give me? Well, in the old days, I suppose it would have been five pounds of sterling silver. Exactly. But it, uh, you know, it still says, it, on a, it says, I promise to pay the beer on demand, five pounds sterling. But in England, yeah. it's sterling, yeah, sterling silver, yeah. Does it actually say sterling silver now? Not on the English ones, but on the Scottish ones it does. Right. So I've got here, Richard, this is five pounds in silver. But two, Gosh. two kilos is two, two and a half kilos. It's two point two pounds in a kilo. I got two one kilo bars, and that makes five pounds. So in stage one of the monetary cycle, there's no. Difference. Oh, so five pounds in weight. Yeah, weight. Yes, yes, yes. Not in. Well, it's right because it's, it's that's the confusion, isn't it? Yeah, five pounds yes. in weight. In stage one, a weight. The weight on there is the same as the weight. I mean, it used to be shekels. Shekels the measurement of weight. You could have five shekels of flour, five shekels of wheat, five shekels of silver. So now, like pounds or kilos or grams. So in stage one, five pounds is convertible for five pounds of silver. So, so if I had to pay you, if you said, well, I, I want you to give me that five pounds of silver, God knows what I would have to pay or what it would be worth in monetary value now. In stage two, we're in stage two of the monetary cycle. Now suspended promises to pay. So is that a broken promise? What do you think? You you give it you, every time you use cash, you use promissory notes. Is yeah. it a broken promise? It's a it's a legal document with a promise on it. Is yes. It, but is it is it a broken promise? I mean, I I haven't paid them. Nobody ever asks me for the money. Until I, they do, I can't break the promise. I mean, I wouldn't want to actually hand over five. Five pounds of silver, because yeah. what is that worth? Like several thousand pounds, I should imagine. The, the one kilo bars, these are about a thousand pounds each, so just under a thousand pounds each. And then the, these 100 gram, they're about a hundred pounds each, just under. So my answer is, it is not a broken promise, technically, because we're in stage two. It is a suspended promise to pay. Right. So this is what Nixon said. His exact words were, I have instructed Secretary Connolly to suspend the convertibility. So now we're in suspended promises to pay. It is a suspended promise to pay, just the same as your one that you write. It's a suspended promise to pay. It's not a broken promise. You and I both know it's a broken promise, but mm. technically it's a suspended promise to pay. And you can use that. Right. So are you familiar with Lord Dunning's legislation back in the 1960s? The name rings a bell, but I wouldn't be able to bring the particular until you say it, and then I'll go, oh, yes, I know what you mean, Everyone, probably. Everyone's heard of Lord Dunning. So what he actually said was, this is the, so, well, first of all, there's the Bills of Exchange Act, 1882, going way back to 1882, and that was that, yeah, promissory notes are to be cash, a legitimate form of payment. You yes. Have, couldn't use cash, couldn't use bank notes. And then Lord Dunning, this is back in 1969, quite recently now, Lord Dunning declared... We have repeatedly said in this court that a bill of exchange or a promissory note is to be treated as cash. It should be honoured. And the promissory note, all it has to have on it is just the amount in words, like the Bank of England. So the amount in words and the amount in numbers and a signature it has to have a signature. And now these don't have the words promissory note on them. No. Yeah. You don't need to put that on yours. You, just the amount in words, the amount in figures and a signature. You need a squiggle. This has got a squiggle there. And that is cash. So if it ever goes to court, the question is, is this promissory note cash? Well, under UK legislation, yes, it is cash. That's amazing, isn't it? And people just don't know this. Yeah, it is 1968, the Lord Dunning, you know, 1969, we've repeatedly said in this court that bills of exchange of promissory note is to be treated as cash. But what's so thing, Richard, we're in the second stage now, stage two, suspended promises to pay what happens in stage three what always happens is they expand the supply of promissory notes exponentially which is what is happening now 
Yeah. Now, in America now, they had one trillion every 100 days. One, tr- one, one trillion dollars every 100 days. Unbelievable. And of course, it goes exponential now. Yeah. All these problems are added to supply. So stage three is when gold and silver do an accounting for all the promissory notes that have been added to supply since the last revaluation. And I think we're at the end of stage two. It's slowly starting. The smart money wants to exchange promissory notes for real money, gold and silver. And then I think everyone else will follow. There'll be a rush to exchange the promissory notes for gold and silver. I think the latter part of the 2020s. That'll be stage three. As late as that, I mean, people are saying, oh, it's going to crash any day, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow. It'll be wrong. It could be earlier, give or take a few years, but it's gone on for so long now. The key saying is that 90% of the move happens in the last 10% of the time. So this monetary cycle started after the Second World War, 1945, up until 71, suspend the convertibility up stage two, up until 2025, 26. I think we're in the latter parts of stage two. We won't know we're in stage three until, I mean, gold is at new all-time highs now, but silver's not yet at new all-time highs. So we're definitely not in stage three yet, but I think we will be. And I, I, why silver is so interesting, Richard, there's a huge shortage of silver now. You know, it's different from gold. That gold is not really used much in industry. It's used a tiny bit, but it's always recovered. Because mm. It is economic to recover. It's about $2,400 per ounce now. It's always economic to recover gold, but it is not economic to recover silver. So this is the first time in history now that silver is more rare than gold in available supplies. It's never happened before. Right. And and silver's been used in all sorts of bits and bobs, you know, even sort of things like colloidal silver and things like that. Brilliant stuff. Colloidal silver. Now, can we talk about that for a minute? I've got, um, when you think about, have you heard of these parasites in the water now that they're all worried about? Yes. And it's too late. They tell them after everyone's been drinking it for days, sorry, you've got to boil your water now. All they have to do, Richard, is drop in some silver coins. Now, can I show you this? I might not show up on camera. But we make pure water. And we always, if you drop in some silver coins, that will kill all bacteria, parasites, waterborne pathogens. It will kill everything. Even fluoride? I don't think it will kill fluoride, no. Now, this water filter is the, you might have heard of the zero water. It, it, it makes pure water, zero parts per million. And then I, we always put some silver in it. And that's what I think everybody should do. Filter your water first and then put some silver in it. Zero water, did you say that filter? Yeah, pure water. You could buy a distiller. The distiller uses a lot of electricity, but that makes pure water. This thing, zero water filter, is the best water filter on the market. It's about £9 for a filter, and, I, and you can make gallons and gallons with one filter. And it makes it, the end result is the same as distilled water. It makes pure, pure water. Pure no, water. Nothing, well, it's just, just h two. It's just mm. water. So, of course, you've got to put your minerals back in, Celtic sea salt, whatever. Yeah, to... I think salt is a good idea, yeah. And I think the silver will kill. Like, if those areas that have these parasites now in the water, if they put silver in it, and I'm fascinated by the, the experiments with colloidal silver, in India now, this has been going on for years now, they've been, every form of pathogen that they've tried, nothing can survive in the presence of colloidal silver, nothing. Now, I know there's a lot of disagreement about virology. Maybe we've not been told the truth about that. So I'm going to sneeze in a second. So, Whatever the truth is about virology, I like to put everything under a umbrella term of bugs. So virus, right. pathogens, germs... Let's just call them all bugs, okay? Everything like that is bugs. Everything. Excuse me, I've got them flying up my nose. <laughs> That's pathogens, yeah. <laughs> God, blimey. It's because the sun came out and uh, maybe a bit of hay fever. I apologise that, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's not uh, put you off your tea. So in India, these experiments I've been following, these medical journals, everything they've tried, including the antibiotic-resistant superbugs, penicillin won't kill it. They, in a Petri dish on a one-to-one ratio, what that means is the tiny, whatever weight of the bug they're trying to kill, that much colloidal silver, nothing can survive. It kills everything. So far, everything they've tried is nothing can survive. Inclu- right, that's amazing. I mean, can I say, the um, how do I say it in code, but the CV-19? If that, yeah, the medical intervention that everyone took in 2021. But the, the actual... And still do. What we're told about the, the CV-19, 
if yes. made an ice lead and put in a petri dish, if it could, they haven't done it yet, but if it could, yes. do, see, will colloidal silver kill it? I think it would, if, if you could purify it and isolate it. Yes, they they haven't isolated it, and uh, which is uh, one reason why Dawn Lester, uh, in her book Everything You Know About What Makes You Will Is Complete Lie, is very interesting. Excuse me. There we go. So there's, there's six main properties of silver, which is actually incredible. I'll go through them briefly. So yes, please do. Bacterial is the main one. It'll kill every known pathogen, including antibiotic-resistant superbugs. Cannot survive. Yes. Yeah. The main incredible property. It's the most electrically conductive element on the periodic table. Gold scores about 30, copper scores about 70, silver scores perfect 100. It's the best electrical conductor. It's the most thermally conductive element on the periodic table. And this is used for a lot of these new technologies, thermal heat exchanges, thermal conductivity, it's better than anything else. It's the most reflective element on the periodic table. Now there's a lot of new technologies with lasers that are using the it's incredible properties of silver. And they need solar panels, of course, need a lot of silver. And it's one people don't often talk about is acoustically conductive. It's by far the most acoustically conductive element, which is a shame because it's used in all these, um, how can we call them, scalar weaponry. And these new technologies, they need a lot of silver for that. But it's all under the Official Secrets Act. We don't know the figures how much is mm. used in military industrial complex and in aerospace whatever the truth is about satellites and everything that goes up they use a lot of silver we don't know those figures but we do know the figures for solar which is really it's absolutely it's going exponential richard the amount used in solar over the last few years Do you know in 2023 it went up 76 percent the amount of solar increase yes and i've been i've been really looking into this a lot because i find it fascinating so the old type of solar panels were called PERC, and they needed 10 milligrams of silver per watt. That was what was needed to make them. The little bit newer type is called Topcon, and they're way more efficient, and they use, I think it's like 15, 50% more, they 15 milligrams of silver per watt. Now there's a new type of solar panel, which is absolutely incredible. It's called heterojunction, and it's way more efficient and that uses, officially they say it uses 22 milligrams per watt. Now most people, if you know someone who's got solar panels on their roof, their roof is like this big for the solar panels. That's probably top con or perk. The new heterojunction, you just need a little square down here, would be able to produce the same power as the whole roof before. Seems, wow. So you imagine if you had the whole roof of heterojunction. Yes. But they use a lot more silver. Now. China last year produced 300 gigawatts of solar. That's what they made. But it's not just what is in the solar panel. It's how much silver is consumed and depleted to produce it in the factories, these mega gigafactories. So if you look at the figures, Richard, for, um, for solar consumption, 300 gigawatts, that's incredible, isn't it? So think about this, right? 0.1 grams per watt, roughly, for this new heterojunction, the new super duper solar panels. That's 0.1 kilo depleted per kilowatt. That's that. That's 100 grams. That is what's depleted per kilowatt. Keep that in mind. And then it's 100 metric tons of silver depleted every gigawatt. So 100 grams per kilowatt. 100 metric tons for a gigawatt, and China made 300 gigawatts last year. Gosh. It's a huge amount of silver. Now, it would be 100,000 metric tons of silver per terawatt. And the global supply has made, last 2.5 years, they've made one terawatt. They've depleted 100,000 metric tons of silver and solar, and that's 2.5 years. And all this business about going green, clean energy, they're saying they want to increase that to one terawatt per year on an annual basis. That would be 100,000 tonnes of silver depleted every year. Is there enough silver in the world? Well, officially, this is a very interesting question, how much is left? If you look at people like Jeff Christian, he's one of the official banker spokesmen. He does the um, CPM group, he does a silver report. He's what everybody looks to, ask how much. Mm. And a lot of people accuse him of lying to support lower silver prices. But he says there's about 5 billion ounces left. 
Now, a lot of people have accused him of that's not true. There's a lot less than that because there's a lot of double counting going on. Now, JP Morgan are the custodian of the iShares ETF, and they say they've got this much. And there's the COMEX, the Commodities Exchange, they say they've got this much. And there's all these other places, the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association. Now, they're saying that they've got this much, but people have accused him of double counting, counting the same silver in all these places, and they come up mm. with an ounce. Well, I wouldn't trust any of them if they're bankers. Well, there's one incredible guy called Ted Butler, and he's one of the longest running freedom fighters in the silver community. He's known as Uncle Ted in the silver community. And he's officially asked the regulators that, who are supposed to prevent you know, crime in the financial markets, are they double counting silver? Are they committing these crimes? He never gets an answer. And he keeps asking them. He's asked all of us to keep writing. Can you do your job? Are these crimes going on? No, I think that's conclusive proof. They are double counting silver. There's a lot less than five billion ounces left. Mm. And it's depleting rapidly. So get your silver quick is what you're saying. I think so. I, I think next year, next year we're going to really see shortages. If they do make another like 300 gigawatts of solar, I think it's going to increase to maybe half a terawatt and eventually a terawatt per year. There is not enough silver left. And right. the thing in military, this one example was is about 11,000 ounces of silver you did in one of these super duper torpedoes they use. And, and none of this is recoverable. Well, it, at the current price, there's no way. No, but it's still on Earth. The silver atoms are still on Earth, and even if they get blown up. or mm, mm. And solar panels is there. You know where it is. But it's not economic to recover it. At the moment, it's less than $30 an ounce. There's no way they can recover it. Mm. But I think as the price will really go up a long way, yeah, it will be economic to recover eventually. And uh, I mean, that, yes, and the, the process of doing that, I suppose, if you've used however it's being, I mean, it's not like it's just in one lump and they go, oh, there's the silver, we take it out, it's easy. You've got to mine like, it. Think of the you, mining it the first time. To mine it the first time, you know, you've got to bring this ore up, refine it, you get the silver, then you put it into a solar panel or industrial use. All that energy to mine it a second time to get yeah. it out, it's twice as much again, isn't it? But there's no point mining it a second time from electrical waste at the moment when it's like 20 something dollars an ounce just to buy it on the open market. It would cost yes. more than $20 to mine it from electrical waste per ounce. Yes. And the silver mines are running out. The, the, the ore grade, which is the way they like an ore grade of, it used to be high grade was about 40 ounces per ton. A ton of ore they bring up and refine they get about 40 ounces back. Now it's gone out to about three ounces per ton. Very low ore grade. Gosh. So it's looking at silver. It's resource depletion. Same with copper, isn't it? There's a bit of a copper squeeze going on. I think depletion is one of the biggest things going on in the world. So let me let me ask you this question then, because um, critics who say, um, yes, silver and gold is all very well if you've got it in your pocket and you, you know, you're dealing locally with your food or you just want to buy a few items. But if you're running industry with large uh, bills coming in every week and all the rest of it, A, there's not enough gold or there's not enough silver, what would they resort to? I think there's nothing wrong with stage one. Digital or paper promissory notes convertible for gold and silver. As long as you don't produce more promissory notes than you hold gold and silver. Now, the amount of gold and silver is being mined is going up about 2% every year. Should be So that's 2% inflation. That's nice, isn't it? Hmm. 82% inflation, sound money system, stage one, convertible promissory notes. That is an honest, sound monetary system, if it's convertible. And every now and again, I think, we should have a, you know, when they say you see who's swimming with no shorts when you drain all the water. You know, everybody turns in their digital promissory notes for gold and to get the silver out of the vaults and see, are there any more promissory notes in supply than there is silver in the vaults? That would be the only way to keep it honest, but it won't. I'm pretty sure we'll go back to stage one. History will repeat. Generations in the future will go to stage two and then stage three. So, so do you think then, as a monetary historian, that people need to worry about what if they've got savings, what's going to happen with it? The, the rumour mill is that, oh, we'll go to CBDCs and then it'll have a time limit. You've got to spend it. So if you've saved all your life or you've had some inheritance you want to buy a house in six months time and they say oh you've got to spend it in a month you go well hang on a second 
I think definitely. We're definitely we're in stage two now. We'll definitely go to stage three. And those who swap their promissory notes for real things now, it doesn't have to be gold and silver. You know, if you if you like fine art or nice musical instruments or, you know, a nice watch or a motorcycle or boat or you want something real because you're gonna promissory notes are gonna be going down in value. They're gonna right. And does that include land? I think land's a very good one, yeah. But the thing is about land is it can't be held privately. You can't really hold it privately anonymously, can you? Or you have experts on your show all the time. Maybe you can. They know how to do that. But I like yes. something that you can hold privately anonymously. There's no paper trail. Nobody knows you own it. Nobody. You can keep it hidden. And if you're asked, you know, did well, I, I lost it in an unfortunate camping accident or whatever. You know, yeah, I, that prize picture of that uh, Van Gogh, which is you know ten foot by six foot. I I put it down for a moment. I can't think where I put it. It might be under the bed now. It might be in the loft. I think this is better than than fine art, you know. Right. Exactly. So, so now you say there's no paper trail, but do not the banks make a note if you're buying a lot of gold and silver and things like that? And and are they informing the government? Good question. Now, my grandfather's time, they did. They, they, they made it illegal to hold gold and silver, and you had to turn your gold and silver into the government. And that happened. Yeah. So I think only the very foolish people actually did that and said, OK, here it is. I'll take your CBDCs. But if you can hold this, even if they have a record of you buying it, it can be held privately anonymously now. You could lose it. You know, I'm, I don't want to lie. I'm not going to tell any lies, but if I, you know, well, I lost it. You might find it again in the future. You might not. That's none of their business, is it? You're not entitled to that information. I buried it. You know, I'll give it to you as soon as I can remember where I put it. It was in one of 200 different places, and I can't quite remember. I'll uh, I'll spend the next 20 years digging up these places to see if I can find But you're quite right. You could buy it. They may know you've got it, and then when they say, well, we want it back, or, you know, we know you've got whatever, and you say, well, I gave it away. Yeah. yeah. You had someone on... Um who said there's no tax on gambling, isn't it? You could you could make a bet with somebody and you lose the bet and now it's this. I don't have it anymore. Yeah. It do, yeah. The fact that they gave it back to you later is irrelevant. I think the key point is you don't want to do that in stage three. Let's go over it again. Stage one is promissory notes convertible for gold and silver. That was up to 91. Stage two, suspend convertibility. Stage three, I think, will be starting soon. Gold and silver revalue up to account for all the promissory notes now it's very tempting imagine you know you, you bought this for 100 pound it's 100 pound a day and in stage three it might be worth a thousand five hundred pounds wow look at the money i've made and you're going to swap this back for promissory notes the next day a loaf of bread costs one thousand five hundred pounds you know you yes go back into promissory notes in stage three you want to wait until stage one again you wait until the promissory note system has collapsed and i feel it will collapse that's why I said 2030, but it could be before then. It could be the next few years, but give it a few years. I think so you, not... do, you don't think it's imminent? No, it's not imminent. And even if it was, like, I mean, stage three, stage three is imminent. Even then, 90% of the move happens in the last 10% of the time. So you've got 10% of the time. It will, it will take a little while. There'll be a slow move into swap your promissory notes for gold and silver and real things. And then it will be all at once. Everyone will rush into it. Mm. That's the stage when, you know, hyperinflation. You could have a wheelbarrow full of promissory notes outside the store, unattended. A thief will come along, tip the promissory notes out and steal the wheelbarrow because it's worth more. <laughs> promissory notes go to nothing, you know? Yeah. Promissory notes are cash. Cash are promissory notes. Once What's your view on the Bradbury Pound? Yeah, I like it, yeah. I mean, is, is that convertible to gold and silver? Well, uh, yes, I don't know. I'll have to ask uh, yeah. Justin Walker, who is the uh, the the king of the promissory of, of the Bradbury Pound. If that, if that's stage one again. It's happening. I think is it which is that, um, which country in Africa? Zimbabwe again. They said they're going back to stage one. They said their promissory notes are convertible for gold and silver again. I think Nigeria is talking about it, and of course the BRICS nations. You know, Russia, China, India, and all their allies. They're talking about a new currency back to stage one again, that will be convertible for gold and silver. So, OK, so let me just run this then by you. I'm, I mean, I, I'm no expert on any of this, as you've discovered. Let's say the government, for whatever reason, let's say 
we get rid of this current government and by luck we get a, a benevolent government government i mean the chances of that obviously are quite remote but let's say that's what happened and they for whatever reason say okay we are now going to these notes in circulation no matter how many you've got whatever you've got five pounds will be convertible to silver so i think you said that you've got about 2100 this is five pounds it's 2.2 yeah. kilo so I got two one kilo bars, and it's yeah. about two and a half kilo. It's five pounds in weight here. Yeah, five pounds in weight. Five pounds in weight, which 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 is equivalent now, to about two thousand two hundred. Yeah, two and a half thousand pounds. So whatever two and a half, let's say just two grand for the sake of ease, whatever two grand can buy you, if they were to convert this back to five pound in weight, it's you would be able to buy five pounds would buy you whatever two grand could buy you stage one yep stage one that's honest sound money system yeah now with thousands of years history of the true value of silver the true value of silver is 3.1 grams is valued at a 12 hour day's wage let me write that down because that's a fascinating yeah, fact a tenth of an ounce a tenth of an ounce so in is, green drachma is, is it is equal to what did you say one 12 hour day yeah 12 hour day's wage whether you're farming a roman soldier would be paid a denarius roughly a tenth of an ounce but 12 hours marching or hand-to-hand -hand combat he'd be paid a denarius 3.1 grams roughly a tenth of an ounce and a five day working week one ounce would be 10 working days so that is an ounce an ounce is two weeks wages if you have the weekends off Okay, so one one ounce. Well, yeah. So ounce is two. Is, and what would be what? Just I'm just curious. In fiat currency today, what would be an ounce of silver, more or less? Twenty five dollars. See, unbelievably cheap. It's manipulated. God, this is work. Kilo bar, Richard. Now, yeah. throughout history, that would be one year's wages. One year, wow. and a talent was a measurement of weight. That was twenty years' wages. Twenty kilos a talent. 20 years wages it's like a lifetime's wages you know that is the true value of silver so i think we will go back to true value on the correction things always correct and on the correction it'll probably overshoot on the correction but then we've got thousands of years history 3.1 grams 12 hour days wage that is the true value of silver and and yes gosh that's a lot to that's i mean that's so that's optimistic. So that is that. That's an optimistic thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, it always happens. The, the, the cycle repeats. Well, stage one, stage two, stage three. But on stage three, it always ends badly. It all, it's always chaos. Yeah. And this time, there will be a few attempts to rejigger the system. They'll try CBDCs that aren't convertible for gold and silver. People won't buy it. No. Nope. And and there's this Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these other, but they're not backed by anything. I think if BRICS nations come along or someone comes along, I think it will be BRICS, Russia and China and, and the allies. And they say, we've got this, yeah, it's promissory notes, digital promissory notes that are convertible for real assets. The common mass mind of the people will say, well, I'll use that. I'll use mm. that and one that's unbacked. It's a difference between something and nothing, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Um, so I had a question then, uh, and, it's, and it's gone out of the old brain box. Um, Oh yes, the question is, what historically is normally the time span between stage one and stage two? Good question. So the first stage is always a good few decades. It's it's always the longest. Stage one is the longest, and you don't right. that they are printing more promissory notes because as long as mo like say a small percentage of people who want to go and change their promissory notes for gold and silver. As long as they've got enough gold and silver to cover that, you could carry on for a long time, couldn't you? Even though they're printing a lot more. But what happens when more people with promissory notes go and they've run out of gold and silver? Hmm. And the next day, they come back the next day, only the first few manage to get it. Then they have to go to stage two. Suspend convertibility. Look, you're all used to it. Your next generation got used to using promissory notes. Just keep using the promissory notes. Forget about gold and silver. And then that, that's a little bit shorter. Stage two is always a bit shorter than stage one. Stage three is very short. 90% of the move happens in the last 10% of the time. So silver now is very, very cheap. It's like less than $30 per ounce. I think 
the, the historical high was in 1979, 1980. It was $52 an ounce back then. So we're not even at new all-time highs yet. So when we get to new all-time highs, then I think it will really start going up quite quick. And there's a saying with silver, it has to go up to go up. What that means is people like momentum, people like chasing the next best thing, you know, whatever it is, NVIDIA or Tesla, or Apple. When it starts to go up a long way, then the public will rush in and then it will really go ballistic. It will go up very high. You need a lot of promissory notes to buy silver. Then you'll know you're in stage three. And I think that will be a very short, short amount of time. OK, so one of the moves that we've seen with banks is to try and reduce the amount of cash that people can take out of the bank and and use these promissory notes and we've seen people um, businesses governments and everybody it seems to urge you to use your phone to pay and uh, when I went for fish and chips which I put my hands up it's not the healthiest food but we had a guest over and we sat on the beach because the sun actually came out and uh, we we all decided that's what we were going to do risk our health and sit with our feet in salt water and um, it was a lovely time. Thank you very much. But as we did that and we paid in cash, a couple, a young couple came up and they ordered stuff mm-hmm. and they just paid on their phone. Now, is that backed by anything? Digital promissory notes. No, stage two. The suspended promise, whether it's paper or digital or plastic. This is plastic, isn't it? Not paper. Yeah, yeah. Suspended promises to pay under stage two since 1971. But but that's the same thing. That is still a promise. It's still a promissory note, even though it's in a sort of banker's digital debit card type situation. Suspended promise to pay. Yeah. I mean, they've got these chips now in the, in the right hand in some country. You put a little chip in your hand. You just wave your hand. You go B and you can pay like that. And there's yeah. a smart ring now. And that's got it's a bit like you know, your credit card. It's got B. Yeah. I suspect that is the future, isn't it? I bet that. After the 2030, sometime around then, we will go back to stage one. As I said, I think there'll be several attempts to rejigger the system. And whoever comes up with stage one again, where they're convertible again, and you can convert it, yeah, I will use those those promissory notes. Just use mm-hmm. the amount you need every day for because it's more convenient. Be, you buy things from China, be, and if there's silver in the vault, and each, like, say, gram has serial numbers on it, you buy something from abroad. That like gram of silver on the blockchain has changed ownership from the buyer to the seller. It doesn't move. It's still in the vault. But now on the blockchain, you bought this thing. Now it, the ownership has changed from the buyer to the seller. And that's fine. But every now and again, I say, don't have too much in that system. Take out the silver. Every now and again, take out real silver and just have a, a little bit in the digital account. But if you can, transact locally. It's always better, isn't it? You know, food. If you can buy, like you buy your raw milk, you know, buy local if you can. I mean, local and in-season is the best. You want to buy really local in-season. So use hand-to-hand transaction. You want a producer, I'd like to pay you in real silver. If you want to buy electronics from China or somewhere, yeah, it's handy to be able to buy with digital silver grams. It's handy to have that. But try, if you can, I say try 90%, use real physical silver local transactions. That would be the best. And, do you know, I, I mean, I think as things are being pushed and people are ever more squeezed, I think we're going to start to see some of that, especially as sole, trailer, uh, sole traders or family run businesses want to um, stay around and yeah. they don't uh, and, and more people w- don't want to use supermarkets and, yeah. and and eat the trashy food that they're selling and they want proper thing and, and farmers and farmers markets. I think the, uh, the, 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 the you know, because you can buy really small bits of silver and, yes. and all of that. Yeah, um, it's all going to change. Each one, it'll go back to true value. Three point one grams is twelve hour days wage, so you won't need much. You will not need much. You know, you can buy a lot with an ounce of silver. That's a lot of money. When we go back to stage one again. Yes, but I'm, I'm just thinking in the meantime. Yeah, you're right. So, can I talk about the silver manipulation for a little bit? Please do. Yes. Stage one, promissory notes are convertible. Now, stage two, as we said, this five pounds of silver is not worth five pounds anymore. A five pound promissory note is different from five pounds of silver. Yes. You have to manipulate both, you have to, because they're different now. There's a pound in weight and a pound in money. So yeah. they have to manipulate the gold and silver. And this silver manipulation has gone on for a long time. And I think it's really coming to a head now. So there's a lot of really good people in the silver community who are calling out the criminals for the criminal silver manipulation. It's, these are crimes in the financial markets. 
And Richard, we are supposed to teach our children that crime doesn't pay. But of course, the bank is a teacher and the crime does pay. And it used to be a conspiracy theory that Silva was manipulating. Now, this was this guy, Jeffrey Christian, who's a banker spokesman. He says, oh, the conspiracy theorist, Silva's manipulated. Well, now it is officially a conspiracy fact. We know that because JP Morgan were fined almost a billion dollar criminal fine for manipulating Silva. It's a confirmed fact. It was just under a billion dollars, like $960 million criminal fine from the Department of Justice, the DOJ. So now it is a conspiracy fact. So it's, what? tell us, what, 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 how is this manipulation practice? What, what are they doing? By selling many, many times more promissory notes of silver than real silver is in existence. It's called naked shorting, huge amounts. A naked short is um, it's like when you reserve a room at a hotel. So a short, you go short. I'm, I make a reservation to buy silver at this lower price. And if it goes down, you make money. If it mm. goes up, trouble. You've lost a lot. Now, there's a certain amount they can short. They, you know, it's got to be, there's got to be limits. But they go naked short a huge amount. Like sometimes, riches. this is hard to get your mind around. Mm. But they sell promissory notes of more silver in one day than is mined in a whole year. Gosh. That's naked so, promissory notes. They sell all these promissory notes. Yes, with nothing. I mean, it's just it's yeah. just the paper or the plastic that it's on, and, and that's it. And, of course, it looks like, oh, the world's flooded with silver. Price, yeah. So much promissory notes, digital paper promissory notes of silver. So, I mean, in an unlikely scenario, they could sell all these promissory notes, millions and millions of them, sell them all, and then some somebody says... Oh, we've come to the last seam of the last piece of silver. There is no more. We're getting and, it. And, and, and these guys would go, oh, bum, we've, we, we can't, we're now, if, we've, we if make, people find out, we're, yeah. Can't make, it, can't make cell phones. Your cell phone, no more silver. When the last ton of silver's gone, no more cell phones. Right. Need it for yeah. everything. Most electrically conducted. So, Officially, there's five billion ounces left. Some people think it's actually less than a billion ounces left. So I think we're very close. The obvious answer is the price has got to go up a long way so that it is economical to retrieve it from waste, isn't it? Mm. And when that happens, I think, Richard, there's going to be, you know the old saying, you know, steal the lid off the church roof. Yes. When extra true value, people will be taking solar panels off everywhere they can find because it is economic to get the silver out of them. And once they know how to do it with a soldering iron or whatever the process is, you know, there'll be there'll be back end, you know, back street places going, there we are, there's another bit, melt that down, get that out. It's, I think they'll just be selling the solar panels. It's going to be very hard to get silver, very costly, and you only get a tiny bit every solar panel. Oh, see, so they'll just use the whole solar, because it's a solar panel, the silver's in there, but yep. use, use it as a frame <laughs> holding yep. your silver, gosh. And then people will sell <laughs> fake ones and... You can see it. Oh, yeah. I've got some old, uh, I've got some old uh, PV cells here. How about them? Are you sure the silver's in them? Oh yes, mate. There's ton of it, ton of it, and gold and uh, platinum, all sort. Of... Well, I'm not interested. I just want the silver, you twit. Silver. I mean, these new heterojunction, they've got so much silver in them. It's like four times the amount of the, the old solar panels. And, and and they're building these solar farms with yeah. massive swathes of land. I mean, they they, they don't realise what they're doing. So no, if silver's so cheap, Richard, why not? Why not just trash it away like that? It's less than thirty dollars an ounce. It's so cheap. Do you know in India they built this? It was the most stupidest idea I've ever heard. They built this floating platform. You can look this up of solar panels, and it was like acres. It was like hectares floating platform of solar panels. Oh, a brilliant idea! Put it out to sea. The big storm smashed it all up. All that silver's gone. Oh, whose idea was that? What could possibly go wrong? Well, could, yeah. <laughs> you can look we, always have a, we always have a placid sea, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, apart from... But in China, I mean, the, last year, 300 gigawatt, and you're talking about one terawatt of solar. I mean, all these mountain sites, huge mountains, the south-facing side, just all covered in solar panels. You know? and, and all this energy now to try and go green, clean energy. What's his name? Keith Starmer, the, um, the Labour guy, and he's saying... By 2030, we're going to go clean, clean renewable energy, you know, big deal. Where's the silver going to come from? Yeah. It's best, I know, but wind, you know, um, the water turbines, the, the, it all needs a lot of silver, and we haven't got enough left. No, so they're talking out their backside. Absolutely. So, um, 
So just going back to, to, to sort of wind up the interview, and it's been absolutely fascinating. I really appreciate you coming on, uh, Dave. Um, going back to these handwritten promissory notes that we yep. can... I mean, are we inf eff effectively... We're just creating these stage two uh, suspended ones. Yes. Are we part of the problem if we're doing that? It's a good question. I feel, Richard, you know when you play a deck, of, you're playing cards... You can't choose the cards you're dealt. You can choose how. I don't like the stage two. It's dishonest. It's cunning. But we're forced to be in that, aren't we? If you're using this, either digital or paper, you're forced to be involved in this. So I don't like it. I wish we could go to stage one and stay in stage one, but we're forced to be in this. Why not play your cards the best you can? You can't choose what cards you get. And the fact that Lord Denning said what he did, and it's in the statutes, and it is technically correct that you can do what you did, write it on a bit of paper, stamp the other one to it and do all that business. Promissory worth our cash, cash our promissory notes. Yeah, so you're not, doing, you're not doing anything wrong. They can't come and arrest you or say, you know, you're creating money that's illegal or whatever. You're just saying, well, I'm, I'm doing what the Bank of England, who is not a bank and has nothing to do with England, it's a corporation i'm doing the same as that and you keep yeah. treating me like a corporation with your capitalized name yeah. so i'm just playing the same game as you as long as there's no loss harm or injury if it was someone an honest hard-working tradesman came and did some work for you he's bought materials he's done work and you try to pay him in promissory notes then that would be loss they would be lost wouldn't it so yeah i think because he couldn't take it anywhere yeah no one else would accept it but if you're dealing with someone like you said like debt collectors at all, you don't agree with it, and you're sure your clean hands approach is staying on it, then yeah, absolutely. Use use promissory notes. They are cash. And if he says you didn't pay me in cash, you only paid me the five pounds in cash, then you say, you go to report fraud and you report it that I paid him in cash. He says, no, you didn't. It all comes down to, okay, are promissory notes cash? Well, yes, they yeah. are. End of story. Yes, they are. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And they can't get out of it. No. So there we are. If you're struggling to pay your council tax or you're being uh, threatened with anything, that's um, a very... There's this one guy called Jim Rickards, okay, who is a CIA inside. He's one of the bad guys. And he wrote 10 years ago, he wrote a report that was leaked. And it was um, a future projection for 10 years in the, for 2024. You can look it up. It's online. And he said, the only way we can go to CBDCs and go to a cashless system. They want cashless so that every transaction is on yes. the blockchain. Everybody can see it. Big business government can see it. No private transactions. It's all on the blockchain. The only way you can do that is if we lock up all the gold and silver in vaults in the Swiss Alps. Now, how ridiculous is that? But that was what he proposed, and it's written down in a white paper. And the only way we have to get confiscate what's illegal to own gold and silver, we have to lock it all up, in, and then... There's nothing can be used privately. You have to do everything on CBDCs when you go beep and we can see oh, it's not possible to, to transact privately. That is what he proposed 10 years ago, 2014. But then you just, people use something else. Yeah, but they can't do it with silver. They could do it with gold, but how could they do it with silver? No more cell phones, no more solar panels, no more electric cars, no more watching TV. I oh, see you what you mean, yes, of course. You can't do it with silver. I mean, gold, they could. Gold is not particularly useful. They use it on electrical audio connectors and things, but it's always recovered. It's hardly used at all. Silver is far better conductor of electricity. Mm. So I don't see how they could go to cashless system. If they did, it would naturally push silver to the forefront for private transactions. If I want to go to a farmer and buy some raw milk, some eggs, some good healthy food, I'm not going to use CBDCs. He doesn't want to use CBDCs. We'll work no. out grams of silver. And that will be the local economy, free. That'll be the, and if it is on the black market, if it is illegal, then we'll call it the free market. This is the people's money. And okay, the difficulty will go up, but the value will go up of using it. Well, of course. And if you don't give them jurisdiction, it's only their legislation crap yep. against uh, lawful, and you're doing, as you say, do no harm. Yep, exactly. And you're tre treating one each other with respect. Yep. So I think everyone listen to this, if you can, if you haven't got any silver, Take silver off the market while it's still so cheap. It won't be this cheap for long. Put yes. the water container. It'll kill any parasites as well. It's on the new. It'll kill any bugs, including superbugs. 
So uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't go and buy the silver quite yet. Wait till I've had a chance to get mine because I brought you the, the video and, you know, I don't want to be the one going up there and going, oh, sorry, we've run out. If all of your viewers went and bought it first and you've been left out. There is a bit of a waiting list. The demand is very high. There's a bit of a waiting list. But you've still got some time yet. I think the price is slowly going up. Yeah. But keep stacking every month. Take real silver. And one important point is don't be convinced into taking promissory notes, you know. Some people, they go to this um, bullionbypost.com. is one of the places you can buy and you can deliver it to your door. And it's quite expensive for delivering. Oh, there's an option here where they store the silver in a vault for me. And they give me a digital promissory note. That sounds good. Don't be fooled into that because they sell 500 of those for every one ounce of real silver. Oh, I see. So they're just doing the same thing the banks do. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's in your hand and you can hide it yeah. wherever, that's entirely, that's the little project you've got. 400 tons of silver to hide you've got to hold it yourself if you don't hold it you don't own it that's right. one, one kilo one kilo of fine silver fantastic we'll Enjoy. be around you we'll be around your house tonight well i've only got in, tiny <laughs> in the middle of the night with our torches banging on the wall where the devil has he put it richard there's two rules in the silver community never store at home a tiny bit of home is fine don't store at home and don't store in a third party institution like a like a safety deposit box or something. Where would you, know, you they, put it then? Think like a pirate. You want to bury it somewhere and you you want to spread out lots of different places and plant something over the top that grows quickly so the metal detectors can't detect it. But use your imagination, you know? You want to be able to say, I lost it. If it becomes illegal to hold gold and silver, I'm sorry, I lost it. I had an unfortunate incident where I dug a hole and I've lost it. And it's none of their business if you find it again. No, there you go. God, blimey. It's, it's, you see, this is what makes life exciting, doesn't it? Instead of just like going on and just doing what everybody tells you to do, to have, using your imagination, drawing up a treasure map and n not actually doing the treasure map because you keep it up there uh, until they put a chip in your head and then they can read where you've got it. Dave, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much. It's been really interesting. Enjoyed talking to you. I'll do it again, Richard. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I'm going to go and find a, go, uh, a silver coin and shove it in the uh, water now. And, Very good. And, and, yeah. Don't worry about parrot. Very good. Fantastic. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. Yes, promissory notes and how it promises to be uh, an interesting thing. From Dave and I, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more monologues and more wonderful guests. But in the meantime, everyone's hurrying to the <laughs> buy stuff. Uh, save some for me. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>